Yeah, history, history is here to help. This is Think Tech I'm Jay Fidel. It's a given Thursday. And we're talking about an article in the paper about uh, please don't gut uh, the university research budget. And so we have with us to discuss this a longtime professor at the university in history, um, Peter Hoffenberg. Welcome to the show, Peter. Good morning. Thank you. Yeah, so let's talk about the article. You were driven to write this, and it appeared in the Star Advertiser. It's a powerful article. But query, um, you know, what, what drove you to write it? Thank you. What drove me to write it was uh, most immediately the last year or two, there have been some concerted attacks on the university, and there have been significant discussions within the university. The two together, I mean, we've all been here long enough to know that many things that are planned, a la the rail, don't come to fruition. But there's a critical mass, both inside and, and outside. And I think that um, some of your viewers know me. I'm old enough that now I'm reflecting on my career, but it's also my father's career. I'm a second generation university professor. And I think, quite obviously, won't surprise anybody, uh, the recent trends in American life and even in international life for universities. Research universities are not the places they used to be, sometimes for very acceptable reasons, life changes, but others for political reasons and reasons which I think are counter to the significant tradition of a public research university. And I, and I am speaking about a very specific type of educational institution. So I suppose what finally drove me was in my 25 years here, which I have enjoyed and have embraced as much as I can and have been embraced, there is only one major public research university. So what we do to Manoa uh, cannot be taken up by anybody else. It cannot be taken up by private colleges. It cannot be taken up by community colleges. Uh, it cannot be taken up by the building of uh, UH West Oahu. There is a specific type of university and Manoa is the only example of that in our 50th state. Well, Peter, um, you know, can you define research? Because uh, Marcy Greenwood, a couple of presidents ago, um, you know, was famous for saying that the University of Hawaii can be very successful, even profitable, if you look at grant writing uh, as a, an economic, um, economic experience. And so her thought was that if we're doing science um, we, and we write a lot of grants and we get a lot of grant money, it's almost as if we have an entrepreneurial activity going on. Uh, so the, my question is, what do you mean by research? Is this research in, in history or is it research in science? Uh, as my beloved middle child would say, two things can be true. It is research in science, and certainly UH uh, is positioned probably better in some scientific fields than other public universities. The plea is for that scientific research, which may or may not be remunerative, right? It may or may not have a commercial aspect, but we could say, for example, uh, volcanology and marine biology have an environmental impact. All right. Nobody I know, and after being here a long time, I, I know most of the folks, even if I wouldn't have coffee with them, nobody in the humanities or non-sciences is saying no scientific research. Nobody is saying that. What we're saying, though, is for a major research university, to answer your question, research is across the board. So yes, research is in uh, the buoys necessary for safe maritime life, and it is having a cutting edge Shakespearean scholar. They're both. And, and major research universities have been able to traditionally accomplish both, sometimes from public funding, sometimes uh, from private funding, very rarely tuition. So the discussion here in the legislature about the university funding itself by tuition, no, no schools fund themselves solely by tuition. Well, am I right to say, right. am I right to say that uh, funding by national organizations, by charitable institutions and the like has, has diminished over COVID or is diminishing now? I don't know whether uh, the numbers are diminishing. I would say that people are more selective and uh, COVID has over the last two years uh, closed the doors on a significant number of colleges, even a few universities. So there's probably less money out there, but are probably also less recipients mm. of that money. 
Mm. Um, I, I think probably if you want to discuss the COVID, we have a situation where the question is if uh, online Zoom learning requires professors to do their research, right? I mean, you can see where this argument ends with some people, right? If we go online and if professors or teachers are really there to teach, teach online, it may not be necessary to do research. So they, they are all connected. I, I think though, as I mentioned in my piece, uh, the advertiser is very kind to publish it. Uh, they have limits, as you know, we're limits. So I can't remember where this was included or not, but COVID was, as we've talked about, all like all historical catastrophes. Uh, some of the things that are done, we're waiting for a crisis to get done, right? An airline looks at, a, at COVID and already wants to cut certain flights, right? It takes advantage of that. So I would like people to be very careful when they read what the university is potentially undergoing. I would like them to recognize that sometimes COVID is used as a cover. Oh, absolutely. That these are have, absolutely. That's a, such right. a true statement. Uh, so but, some, some yes, because of COVID, certainly. Um, but, but a lot of things have been in the pipeline and you and I have been here forever. Uh, so we know that to a certain degree, and I, this is not to pick on anybody, but to a certain degree, when the decision was made to build west of Wahoo, there were already cuts in, uh, towards Manoa on the table. Well, you know, you didn't mention it in the article, but I would like to mention it now. Uh, it seems like the uh, legislature has been on the attack against the university for, for at least a few years. And uh, there are certain legislators out there, we can talk about them by name if you like, uh, who, have, who have it in for the university and who are uh, year after year attacking the university and the university budget. Um, you didn't talk about it in the article. Well, I, I wonder if you could talk about, you know, the underlying problem here is the uh, willingness of the legislature uh, to fund the activities that, are, uh, that the university is, is involved in. Absolutely. I, I didn't mention that. Um, it, was, it was edited out, which is fine. Um, I think that you're absolutely right that uh, probably a critical mass of the legislature just doesn't care about the university. And that allows the five or six people we read about uh, to attack the university, such as give me a list of 30 professors who aren't pulling their weight like we had two years ago. Um, we know, though, in an in, imperfect democracy, <laughs> including Hawaii, uh, legislatures can do things because people are either generally indifferent or not vociferously supportive. So again, I, I don't, also don't find the general public support here for a major research university in the sense of, as I did mention in my article, and I feel in a very heartfelt way, uh, I've worked out there uh, taught kids out there that the kid from Kahuku who does not want to end up only folding a towel at a hotel mm -hmm. and has a love for French poetry and might end up being a brilliant writer. But as I did mention in my article, which is the obvious point, that kid can't get on a train or a car and cross the border to go to another major research university. And I think I know that that seems like a rather banal example, but I think we'd be surprised about the number of kids here in high school who, when asked if they could learn to paint, if they could spend time learning literature. Uh, the growth of the Hawaiian Studies program is a good example. There was a demand for people to learn the Hawaiian language in a systematic and advanced way, right? Including Hawaiian Studies professors who research in the Hawaiian language. So if somebody out there in the public just thinks the Hawaiian Study Center is teaching what's already known, that's not true. It's, it's a little small, uh, restricted, but I don't mean restricted in a bad way, I mean restricted in its goals, research center. I and mean, the Hawaiian Studies Center is a research center. That was now, a very powerful part of your article. And, 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 and it touched me. And uh, I wonder, you know, and your article hopefully will be read by members of the legislature, including those who would attack the university. But we need more than your article, Peter. We, we need somebody from Manoa to go down and talk to those people, maybe David Lasner, somebody to maintain a, a campaign to explain it to them and educate it and, and bring the points of your article home to them. 
Has this been happening? Uh, has it been successful in any way? Well, as, as you know, I'm not a particularly plugged in person. So, and, I, and I'm not sure that a history professor should be. My role is to observe, to discuss, to analyze. Um, I, I do communicate with the president and the deans about various issues. And I'm more than happy uh, with your question to follow up. Um, I have a strong sense that my, my uh, column was a small pebble. And might have been, might not have actually even have been read. It's quite possible. Um, I, would, I would say though, um, which is not uh, an exercise in ego, I would say a lot of my colleagues do agree with me, but also across the board. I mean, I, I do know a fair number of scientists, and they also recognize that having students who read and write well improves the nature of science. I mean, there's a reason that law schools go after English majors, those kids learn how to read carefully. They also, as you know, as a lawyer, you can't read every single word, so they know how to read intelligently and they know how to write. And if we're dealing with uh, only commercial ventures or only research that has immediate remuneration, most of those will go by the wayside. I mean, technical writing, for example, will still be taught. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the things that I, I wanted to emphasize, which I think uh, you appreciate and some of the, the um, readers might appreciate is we also are supposed to educate the next generation of professors. So if, if all we do is teach, we don't teach them how to research. We don't encourage them to move language along. And so when they teach, they can tell, they can say correctly what Professor Hoffenberg got wrong, not just repeating my lectures. And that's all part of the dynamic. About critical uh, thinking. In critical thinking, and the critical thinking uh, to be able to uh, admit, and especially today, as we've talked about, right, the role of the past and the abuse of the past, right, to be able to understand it, to express it, and to be able to say, you know, my, my professor was wrong. This is why she was wrong. And, but you can't do that unless you have active research, graduate students. And I guess the final point was I, and this may be, purely utopian. I really feel it, it strengthens the entire community. I really feel it strengthens just the nature of life here in Hawaii, uh, the, the young people who stay here, what we read about in the newspapers, what people read in general. I just, to me, to me a major public research university is, is one of the hearts and souls of a community. Well, let me, let me touch on a couple of other points that I wanted to ask you about. Number one is, um, you know, uh, we learned from Evan Dobell on forward um, that the university can, if it wishes, spend enormous amounts of money um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. on deans and administrators. You know, I yes. mean, half a million dollars is never a surprise and still isn't. Um, and, and so uh, I guess there are people in the ledge and in the community that, you know, that react to that. Uh, furthermore, you know, there's this whole issue of tenure. And I guess that's more sophisticated, but I think there are people in the university who would like to see that reformed. So my question from Dobell on forward, uh, can't the university do, do some reforming here? Can't the university you know, spend a little less on some of these things? Uh, wouldn't that help? I think that would help um, in the sense of streamlining a bit, um, putting more money into teaching and research faculty than administration. Uh, but again, that's not my field of expertise. So when I look at administrators, uh, each of them has a particular law behind them requiring their existence. And then there are sub administrators. Um, I, I agree with you. I, I'm not sure uh, financially what a big hit that is. I think politically, it's an issue. And uh, some of the best major universities have administrators who either rotate around or still continue to teach. So I think part of the difficulty is the gap between administrators and the classroom experience. Mm -hmm. and certainly if you had a DOE third grade teacher, I think she or he would agree with me. That, but I, I guess that we've talked about this in general. That's part of modern society, right? Too many folks administrating who don't really have the experience of being in the shop. Um, so what I would like to see if, if uh, David were here with me 
is uh, I would see I would like to see some cutting and pruning, but I would also uh, like to see administrators with classroom experience who, on a regular basis, actually go back to the classroom to you understand know, what's going thing, on. Yeah. One thing that COVID might have taught us, and, and in fact, you know, if we were looking carefully ten years before that, one thing that MOOCs might have, you know, massive online open courses, right, as 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 have uh, been developed on the mainland. I, would, I was going to say flourish, but I don't think they've flourished. They've been developed, but they haven't flourished. They've never been adopted uh, much in University of Hawaii. Would that help? Would that help in terms of getting the word out of having that kid uh, learn French poetry? Uh, would it be a way to extend and um, um, leverage you know, the intellectual activity of the university out into the community? So as usual, the answer is a uh, multi-level. In general, yes. In general, getting a positive educational word out. I would say that, that the danger of that, as you well know, is that that will replace classroom education. So in other words, if we were to, and we've seen it, right? Zoom has replaced both here and elsewhere. And that worries me. And I think we all know about the significance of being in a classroom. If for no, no other reason, and being able to listen to the person next to you who you hate and being able to just accept that that's part of life. Okay, so as far as I, I could see the university in particular doing what you suggested with some of our uh, more esteemed faculty and particularly those who still want to teach but would like to retire. So I could see a niche for that. My goal would be to get people to the university rather than the university to them. And that's one of the reasons, I, again, I can't remember whether it was edited out or not, but we have a Kapuna program. And it is a successful program. No, that was in the article, yeah. Right. And so I've had uh, friends of the community, retirees, who have taken Dr. Mark Merlin's course on Hawaiian flora, right? Something they've driven by every day for 50 years. But they come here. Now, again, with COVID, there are restrictions. Uh, I would, so I, I would say I'd like to see a nice combination. Sure, get the word out, uh, be able to provide. I mean, it seemed to me we could have professors go to various, uh, like my colleagues and I go to assisted living and we give lectures. We could do much more of that. I also think though we could make the university much more accessible. Like I constantly hear complaints about parking and this and that. Um, but I also see when there is an event that people want to go to a Kennedy Theater, the parking lot is full. Mm -hmm. And certainly uh, the volleyball games are full. Mm -hmm. So there are, there are people who are willing to, to come here. So I guess the answer would be, I agree with you, but the quid pro quo would be to get folks to come here. I mean, get the family from Kapuna to come here and let the kids sit in the class and let the parents enjoy uh, more than once in my uh, lifetime here in-person lecturing, I've had parents who just are, have never had the chance. <laughs> or, you know, when they went to UH, they had to work three jobs. Uh, it, it's just part, and I, I know I sound utopian, and I do sound like a second generation professor, but if we're gonna address all the problems that you and I have talked about every Thursday, we ha education has to at least be part of that. Well, we have to have depth. At least. You know, but, but I wanna get to one 50,000 foot question Sure. Back back um, back in the day when think tech was very young, we had some administrator I can't remember who it was uh, on our radio show, and he made a statement that has stuck with me all these years, and it's this: this is a small state, um, and um, the question is what 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 should the scale of the biggest public research institution be? How big can it be? How big can this? How big can it be for the state to support it? You know, it is. Uh, it is. Uh, last I recall, it was 1.5 billion coming from the state of Hawaii. That's a substantial percentage of the total state budget. Um, query: How big can it get? How much money can we afford? Uh, in in a larger state, no question. But we are a small state. How would you respond to that guy's comment? I would respond again, yes, true, but that doesn't mean we don't uh, do what I like to say. When people come and visit Honolulu, 
I like to say we have one of everything. We have one symphony, right? We don't have four symphonies. We have one wonderful art museum. We don't have five. We can have one solid research university. I think the answer to the administrator is that a major public university in a larger state, for example, might have three people to teach French art history. We can afford one person. So what we have is a major research university in which the intellectual competition within the university will be limited. We, we can't hire five people to teach one field, all right, like Berkeley or UCLA can, or at least could. But I, see, I don't buy that as a reason. One of the reasons I mentioned the phrase, uh, be everything, is the current administration is echoing your former administration, right? The, the current version of we're a small state is we can't be everything. That's the current version, right? That's the language used. But I, I don't, I mean, when you, when you have a, a university that starts cutting you know, graduate programs in art history. Uh, it will probably not cut the sciences because there's a lot of federal money into the sciences. But you start cutting things with that as an excuse. And a, a university is a living organism. I mean, you can prune a little bit, but you start clipping away. That French art history inspires the biologists to, to improve the scientific illustrations. It enables a biologist to go as a representative of the state of Hawaii to a conference in Paris. These are not uh, not merely pie in the sky things. These, no, no, these I, to I totally really agree. I totally these agree. These happen. Now, we're I talking do agree. about the intellectual life of the state. We're talking about the intellectual life of each individual in the state. We're it's, talking it's, about our collective intellectual life, and we can dumb ourselves down. That's easy enough. But that's not the certainly not what we want. We want we want to have a high plane as high as anywhere in the country right here. Right. We can. The only way, the only path to that is through the University of Hawaii. That's as clear as, as a bell. Right. And, and also, I, I agree with you intellectually, but I also think that universities play a very important social role. They, they are a place where people have different views, where people have absolutely no knowledge about something can come. And, and that's from a Zoom, right? It's you're, you're not socializing. But the significance of getting kids in the classroom, getting kids to sit with professors, having coffee, and I don't mean an idealized way, right? They're going to be arguments, and they're going to be people who disagree. That's part of life. But to do that in a relatively safe environment, fortunately, it's still relatively safe. And that's a kind of social trickling, which helps us. Now, the answer to the legislature is yes, all legislators have Legislatures across the country all have some thing, fingers in the pie, right? They all do. So the idea the university can be completely free of the legislatures is not a reasonable response. But the legislature, I think, has to pick and choose the battles that uh, mean more than just political points. So a legislator going after 30 faculty members because, for example, their research hasn't been completed is a, is a silly point-making exercise. That's not an exercise which contributes in any way. It's not even a lot of money in any way. It's a way to make political points. And that I would like to stop. I'd like to stop using the university for political points. Yes, absolutely. As long as, as, long as I've been here though, quarter of a century, uh, Ben Cayetano did it. <laughs> uh, it, is all, it has been part of the DNA, at least for some people. And so my request would be, that those who see it in the legislature, you don't have to necessarily be our cheerleaders, but just point out the importance of having a university and the importance of picking and choosing significant battles with the university. It's battles that, that really matter to the nature of the university and to the economy. And most of these battles to me have been PR battles. Last, I, last question, Peter. Um, you, you talked about folding towels in, in Waikiki, a very troublesome career path. Um, and and uh, at the same time, we're talking about raising the intellectual level of thought, you know, in the state. But, but we still have a lot of graduates of the university who have done very well, who have raised their level of intellectual, intellectual thought, who split. They go to the mainland because they'll get better jobs. They can use that training. They can use that education, the critical thinking, 
in jobs on the mainland. So they go and they build families and we lose them. We lose them from our, you know, the, the, the gem in our crown, uh, uh, the, um, you know, the largest public research institution clearly in the state. So my thought is this, and I, I wonder about your thoughts on this. While we build the university, and I'm not talking about maintaining it, Peter. I'm talking about building it, making it bigger, better, mm -hmm. spending more money, not the same, but more money in the university. It seems to me we have to look at the other side of the coin, and that is we have to build the economy uh, to allow for entrepreneurship, for new companies, for global um, economic experiences here. So this becomes a, a magnet for business and a magnet for those kids who would otherwise be part of the brain drain. So, the, you know, the legislature has to do more, in my view, I'm interested in yours, uh, more than just support and expand and, and improve the university. It has to build an economy where the university's graduates have a place to go. What do you think? I think absolutely. I want to correct myself just before I answer you. Uh, when I mentioned folding towels, I, I mentioned that as um, the only option. So there's nothing wrong with folding towels. I want to be very careful. I just want the kid to be able to do something else that he wants to or she wants to. Absolutely. And, and when I talk about a major research university, I, I don't talk about an island <laughs> separated from the rest of society in both ways, both the university contributing and no major research university can thrive without a larger community. So I'm not, I'm not talking about a monastery or a mountain on the hill. I entirely agree with you. I also think, though, that the university is a place where those ideas can be tossed about. They can be tested. So you talk about entrepreneurship, promote that. Uh, the difference, perhaps, in a university from what some of the legislators across the country are thinking is that university research often fails. My scientific research often fails. Uh, hum humanities professors spend time researching and they don't get published. That's part of our life. So if the goal is, you know, immediate or relative immediate gratification and remuneration, that's a mindset we have to think about changing, right? Most good entrepreneurial ideas, right, take time. They take time to develop, to test, et cetera. So I'm all in keeping with you, exactly. I would like the wider community, and it's hard to think um, more along the lines, and this gets connected to the tenure issue. More along the lines, our universities need to be a place where folks can experiment and where failure uh, will not in and of itself be held against you, unless, of course, the reason for the failure, right? Obviously, there could be some reasons in which the person should be out of the university. But the fact of a scientific experiment not working, or the fact of a professor spending time in English researching a project and cannot find a publisher, that's no reason to fire them. <laughs> that's no reason to end tenure. So well, I, in my observation think about, I mean, for business people, think about more the traditional line that, for example, GE as a company would hire their own researchers, right? And provide semi-lifetime employment for researchers, and therefore they could tinker around and get a light bulb that did not work, but they wouldn't lose their job. I mean, the goal was, as you say, to improve the economy, but to recognize that, look, they're going to be, they're obviously going to be mistakes made. Yeah, I, I want to go to one more point before sure. we have to go, and that is something uh, that, that um, you, you touched on, um, and that is, um, so we have the university, uh, it's an important institution in our country and we have these kids uh, who might be leaving um, but at the end of the day um, they they don't work well together because we don't attend to them together and so you know i'm thinking that we ha we have to do something about that um, we have to uh, it, and at the end of the day peter it is a political issue it's a platform point for anybody running for office how can we get them to understand this, this connection? How can we get them to understand that uh, if Hawaii doesn't handle this, this collective bunch of issues, um, we will be backwater. This is, a, this is a serious problem. To attract the faculty, to encourage the faculty, 
to attract the students from various places in the world and to train them well and to try to keep them here. Um, you know, it, this is a big, this is a big task. This is a big challenge on so many levels. So what's your advice to the legislature, all that considered? Uh, my advice for at least some of the legislature is come down. Uh, go to a class in KCC, go to a class in West Oahu, come talk story with the professors and the graduate students um, and make it less only a monetary issue and less uh, a contentious uh, union rep talks to legislature, legislature doesn't like the union rep. We have to somehow change, if you say the politics, we have to change the political interaction. And, and I think we both need to know, and, and professors like myself need to go to the legislature to try to understand better, right? We have really two different worlds. It's kind of a culture, cultural battle. And it's not, it's not unique to here. Uh, we don't really have time, maybe sometime else we can talk about tenure, but the reforms and even the removal of tenure is not reserved to Hawaii. That's a national issue, and I'm, more happy, and I'm happy to talk about that. It is so a pivotal issue here to be uh, just very briefly to give a professor who, who is qualified, he or she has jumped through the hoops. So tenure is not an easy thing, but upon granting tenure, there are not only additional responsibilities, but there is what you mentioned, there is the freedom to tinker around and say, well, you know, this might help the, the Hawaiian economy. I'm not gonna lose my job, if my study is wrong. Yeah, that, you know, that's, and that's a great point to leave this discussion on. You know, it's like growing something. You water it, you provide nutrition, and you don't stand there and wait for it to, you know, to flourish immediately. It's going to take a little time. These things take time. Growing a generation of, of smart kids who can find a way to stay here and, and help us produce a better economy, it takes time. And I think, uh, you know, inherent, at least in my observation, in the business community is, if you want me to spend a dime, I want to see immediate results. And if you can't promise me immediate results, if you can't demonstrate immediate results, I'm not going to invest in you. This is wrong thinking. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about an educational institution, it takes time, you have to grow it like a fine, a fine exotic plant. And you have to water it and care for it and love to it and sing to it. So let's I, all I sing to the university. That. I appreciate that. No, but no, very, very much. And, and that's, a, that's the kind of cultural issue we have to deal with. And I don't mean culture in a dismissive way, right? Not one is right or one is wrong, but the idea of expectations and a sense of an investment. I mean, a, a university is an investment, and it's, but it's an investment which you say, there will be some immediate returns. Sure, there always will be some. But it, it's the long-term returns you want to look for. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Of course, Peter my Oliver, pleasure. history professor at the University of Hawaii, Manoa. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this discussion. Hope to see you soon. You will. Very good. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.